Hi everybody. So I want to do a video about what tools I use in conjunction with my cap sessions. So when I started cap, a lot of things started to come up. And I was also guided to certain people, certain practices, certain new experiences. I was in like whenever I was going uh, back home after a camp session, I would be in this high energy vibration and I would feel impulses to look for certain things. Like it was so spontaneously and I knew I need to do that or I need to try this out. And one of those things was transpersonal coaching. So what is transpersonal coaching? Transpersonal coaching is a system where there's a facilitator and a participant. The facilitator, he guides the participant through three different um, sessions of one hour, right? Each session, there's a matrix, a system that's revealed to the participant, and the participant steps on the on the on the playground, let's say. And the, the facilitator is guiding the participant through, through the exercise. And through the exercise, as the participant goes through it, he becomes conscious of his unconscious inner struggles, of his unconscious judgments, patterns, and systems, of his own relationship to himself, to his parents, and how those systems relate and work together. Where he got certain things from, what he believes, what he doesn't believe. Um, he learns about his biggest fears and how, how they were created or how they are um, being kept alive. And the participant is put in a situation where he's given the opportunity to be more responsible so throughout the exercises, it goes up in intensity. Every session is more intense. It's all about realizing you as a person have 95% unconscious programming, right? From family, society, um, where, everywhere you've actually been, right? You're always programmed. Mm -hmm. So besides that programming, this 5% of consciousness, right? Your conscious memory, your conscious, pro, uh, your conscious, your conscious awareness. Uh, you're trying to do, you're trying to be, you're trying to set goals, you're trying to work out, you're trying to eat healthy, you're trying to uh, make your life better. You're trying, you're trying, you're trying. You set these things up for yourself, but then as you, as you set out, you either go through challenges and you either succeed or you don't succeed, or you fall back or you wean off. Every time, you're your own biggest enemy or your own biggest hurdle, right? Because whenever you want to get somewhere you've never been before, you have to go through the uncomfortability of letting go in you what is resisting the new, right? Because when there is something, a possibility for the new, something in us which has created structures for safety, which has created structures for survival and for comfort, it feels threatened. Because of the new, it means new responsibilities, new adaptation, new, new structures. So when that happens, we either push through that, or we get we go back. So this program, personal tra uh, transpersonal coaching, it allows you to become conscious of the unconscious to bring more consciousness into the, into those 95% and to see yourself and your inner child 
right? Most of your programming is done between zero and six. When you're, when you're between zero and six, as a child, you're as a, like a sponge and you're, you're perceiving every situation that you are in to get food, right? You need to do whatever you need to do to get food, to survive. So you adapt, you adapt strategies and perceptions, right? You create, um, unconsciously, you, you perceive your parents or the, or the situations in your life in a certain way so that you can live with it, right? Because the reality is sometimes people are born into hard families, hard situations, and there's a lot of trouble. And because it's very difficult for the child to experience the negativity or the rejection or the pain, what happens is there's this automatic reaction to go into your head and start thinking because you don't want to feel the pain. When that happens, there are unconscious patterns that are created, patterns of resisting the situation and avoiding the situation. And you actually avoid your own potential. So with, with these exercises, with transpersonal coaching, we go through each exercise upping up the, the tension and we allow you to incorporate and broaden your perspective of your of your relationship to your family to your inner child and to your grandparents and you see how you and your inner child live together and how you are in this almost symbiotic state and you almost need to almost like separate yourself and give each each part of you a specific um, place in your life because if you don't do that the unconscious desires of the inner child or fears can act through you so you may have a rational adult person who acts like that but in difficult situation he becomes angry he becomes like a child he becomes upset so he goes back and forth constantly, child, adult, child, adult, child, adult, child, adult, right? And through this system, you can become aware to fix yourself in the adult mindset. And when you're in the adult mindset or adult consciousness, the inner child is still there. You can still experience it all, but it doesn't have the same power as it had over you. It doesn't have those, those fear-based reactions. It, it gives you more possibilities, it gives you more awareness of what's real and what you can be. So the vision of it, of the program is, so we as human beings, we're, we're like tubes, right? We're tubes for the energy of the universe, of life, to stream, stream through and create things in life. Right, so what we need to focus on when we, get, when we get clarity is what do I want to create? <laughs> I remember when I went to my, uh, to my coach and I talked about spirituality, who am I? He's like, who am I in spirituality is a childish question because it's all about transcending what you cannot deal with. It's running, running away from your body into your head. And although I don't necessarily agree fully with that, I do understand that viewpoint because for certain people, it's way more uh, helpful to empower them in a way where they're more conscious and responsible and grounded than they are almost, yeah, transcendent of their humanity. Because I don't, I don't, I don't think that everybody should, should, should be in that state of being transcendent. Maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't. I don't know. I don't have that. Um, I don't have that understanding. I know for myself, 
for myself, from my own experience, when I'm in these transcendent states, everything's flowing, everything's beautiful, right? But the unconsciousness <laughs> is still there. And the unconsciousness can create a lot of havoc. And the unconsciousness can create a lot of repeating cycles, cycle, 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 cycles. And what I really like about this work is that we talk about when you see cycles repeating themselves, you actually see that there's something in that experience that is not understood. So for instance, if our inner child from zero to six had a certain trauma and there was, he didn't understand it and there's now a need or a, a false perception. Because of that false perception, the inner child now wants to, he either recreates the situations over and over and over again, because that's what he was programmed to, or he tries to he suffers from it by, by feeling the limitation of that perception. So what we want to do is we want to go to the, to the deep root cause of what happened there. Because the child, it's like you have a painting, right? And if you stand to it like this with your nose, you're just seeing blur. You don't even see clearly what's happening. And that's what the child is doing. It's like, what happened here? I don't understand. I want to, I want to understand what happened here. But I, I cannot see. It's confused, confused, confused. When you go back, you see the full hand. You understand what it is. You see the possibilities. You open to the reality of what is. And that's what we, what we do with this, with this work. So transpersonal coaching, you cannot do it alone, but if you're a, um, if you train as a facilitator, you can do it on your own. So what I did was I, I trained as a facilitator and I thought like, whoa, this is exactly what I need for my sessions with CAP. Because sometimes after CAP, I would have these feelings or emotions that were lingering and I didn't know what to do with them. I thought like, whoa, it, they stay for quite a while. And so I use that process on myself to release them. There's this one moment that I really remember so vividly and was so powerful. I went to a camp session and I met one of the facilitators. So the moment we met, the moment I saw her, she looked very sweet. I hugged her. The moment I hugged her, my heart and her heart, they clam like magnets. It felt like unity. And I had this feeling of, wow, I am home. I am home. I am home. And there was pure stillness, love, serenity. It's indescribable. It's like, it was like a spiritual experience. And she also felt it because we, we stood there and we hugged for a long time. She said, this is so nice. And I was just like, oh my God, I, I had no words because the experience is so strong. You cannot even think you just am wowed by it. I let her go, thanked her at the cap session. And then at the end of the cap session, we hugged again. It was the same experience. And this time we held on for so long. She gave me a kiss on the cheek. She was like, you should come uh, next time again. I hope to see you again. So on the way, I was like, wow, this was so amazing. Like my, my, thought, my thoughts started to, to work. My thoughts started to project on the experience. Because as I was going home, there was an aching in my heart. The next day, and the next day, and the next day. There was this feeling, I don't feel that wholeness, that feeling of home anymore. I feel like I need her. Is she my twin flame? Is she my soulmate? Is she who I love? I, I want to have that experience with her. I want to reach out to her. All these thoughts, all these things started to come out. So I wrote like a love letter to her. Right? It was all pouring out. <laughs> I then, um, I thought, okay, if this is real, I want to find out, but 
I'm gonna park this for a while. And if this is real, I'm gonna send this in a couple of weeks, in one, two weeks. Because if it's real, it's still gonna be true in a week or two. But if it's not, I don't wanna embarrass, embarrass myself, right? So I put myself through the process of transpersonal coaching. And at the end, I realized that feeling, that nagging for I want that experience back was my inner child. I felt that energy of, of, of that feeling craving for that wholeness because as I found out through the process, in my childhood, I always craved to be completely absorbed by my mother to be completely, completely taken and almost devoured by her. I wanted to be in her, right? In her belly. And um, she was never very intimate with me. She never gave me a lot of intimacy, a lot of cuddling. She was very, I don't know, a bit distant. She never expressed her love that much towards me. So in me, there was the perception. The perception of the child was he didn't want to feel rejected. So the perception was she's a bad mother or she, she, she doesn't love me that much. She's, she's bad because of this and that, 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 that. But in me, there was the perception I was unlovable and there was a feeling I didn't get something. I feel incomplete. I feel that something that I needed was not received. And so throughout my life, my whole life, there was this constant feeling I don't have something that I need. There's something that I need there and I didn't receive it. And every time I would look at women, that unconscious feeling would look at them and I would feel like, oh, maybe she can be the one. Wow. So every time I would look at women, I would, I would have this interest and curiosity to reach out to them. But I never knew why I thought it was genuine interest. Now I realized it was this unconscious thing to be fulfilled, to be made whole. So going through the process, there came a moment, a moment of realization when I saw that the inner child, his perception was false because he thought that it was personal. He never realized that the parents had their own conditioning, their own struggles. They are a life force themselves. They are waves of love. And they want to live as fully as to be alive, right? But because of their own conditioning, they are limited in their expression of their love. So the love was always there. It was always there. God's love, my parents' love. It was always there, but it was always limited by their own internal struggles and, and conditionings. When that was realized and clearly seen, I realized there was nothing that I did not get. I was born purely whole. I was created purely whole. That, and that experience does not mean that I did not get something that I needed to get. I was, I was born whole. And when I felt that, my heart welled up. I started to cry. I fell on my knees. I was thankful to my parents. Thank you for life. For for giving me life, for, for being what you are, for giving me what you could give me. Because I realized it's not their fault. When I went outside and I looked at people, I saw women for the first time, not as objects from which I could get my fulfillment, but as people. A human being who has certain characteristics, certain body shape, certain way of being, and I realized, wow, I don't need anything from that, from you. I don't need anything from you. I felt the shift, the difference. And there was only this feeling of like, I can only have experiences with you. I can have experiences of fun, sexual experiences, conversation. I can have all kinds of different experiences, but it will not add on to me. It will not complete me. I'm already complete. And it was such a huge shift for me. It was like a deep trauma, a deep trauma that was 
it was just completely recontextualized. And I was so thankful for that. And I looked at the message that I had written to that girl and I realized this is not true anymore. This was true two days ago from the unconscious place of pain, of unholeness, where this was coming from, this was a cry for help, right? There's this saying by Anthony DeMello that goes like, you're never in love with anybody. You're only in love with the hopeful idea of who that person is, right? Are you really in love with that person? How come you, you fell out of love, right? Your idea of the person changed, right? When you are in love, you have a certain idea of the person and then you go through them, with, through them your idea about the person changes because they're, because of the interaction, because of the experiences, and you fall out of love. Your idea of the person changes. Well, you know when people say, I will always love you. I cannot live without you. Remember when you said those things or had love, love relationships? You were in love, and then you broke up, and then time passed, and what happened? you fell in love with a different person. It was so, it's so revealing, but like, you have to really go to the root of your own conditioning because you can understand these ideas, but they only give you a glimpse of inspiration. Like, okay, if that is how it is, and you understand that, then what in me is preventing me from being real, from seeing the truth? And those are the core, core programmings. So transpersonal coaching, I would definitely recommend it to anybody who wants to have a, a tool for shadow work. So you can just online, Google, on Google, put in transpersonal coaching, R-I-I-H-S, Reese is the company that does it. They do online trainings. Uh, if you train as a facilitator, you can work with other people or you can just do consultation. Usually it's three consultations. Mm, I recommend it to everybody who wants to do shadow work because it's a great tool for spirituality. It's about transcendence. It's about integration. It's about embodiment. It's about responsibility. It's about mm, your life. Yeah, the wholeness of your life. There are many other countless examples that I can give about what I, this work has done for me, but Honestly, just try it out. <laughs> if uh, anybody wants to do a trial session with me, I'm willing to, if I have time, to do free sessions. All I would ask in return is that you, you would give me a testimonial. So if you're interested in doing this kind of work, just write to me that you wanna do a trial. I'll, I'll do one or two or three sessions with you. If you're if you're up if you're up for it if you have a desire for it and all I want would ask in return is a testimonial of how it was to work with me uh, and what the work was for you so yeah thank you have a uh, lovely day.